In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to create a wildcard certificate and how to import that into your Citrix ADC. The reason being in my last video, I just showed you how to configure a storefront load balancer, which by the way, I'll put a link to that video in the description. Um, but what I realized as I was going through that video is not everyone may know how to import their wildcard certificate to utilize that for, for your load balancer, right? So let's go ahead and, and walk through that process. So of course, as a, a prerequisite, you're gonna need a certificate authority within your existing domain. So one way you can actually check that is go to add roles and features on your domain controller, server selection, and you'll see I have Active Directory certificate services installed on this one. Your CA might not necessarily be your domain controller, but you will be able to see if there's a CA as we go through this, this creation process of your certificate. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump over to my storefront server in which when you actually install storefront, it's gonna install IAS automatically if you didn't do it manually, in which you wanna to go to IAS, open up the Internet Information Services console. You'll see an options for server certificates here. Go ahead and go into that. And you'll see I already have a wildcard here, but let's create a new one. Let's create a domain certificate on the right hand side here. And the common name is going to be um, asterisk dot your FQDN, your fully qualified domain name. Um, for the rest, really doesn't matter too much. I'll just do a bunch of random letters here. And in this case, it might not work for me. It did. Um, so here is where we actually see our certificate authority. So if you hit select here and you don't see it, that means your server does not see a CA on your domain. And I will call this wildcard2. Do wildcard2 and see if that works. It's not working. Um, oh yeah, here we go, finish. All right, so we have this here. Here's my certificate for, for my wildcard, my new one here. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to export this and I will export this to my C drive and I'll call this wildcard2. And you'll see that it's saving this as a PFX. So that's perfect format for what we want for your actual Netscaler. So for the password, I'm just gonna use one and one um, but feel free to, to actually give that a password. And just wanna make sure something here. Be good. All right, cool. So we have that certificate now. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna move that over to the C drive on my domain controller, just because I know I can access that from, from my Netscaler, because you are gonna need your Netscaler to be able to access wherever that certificate we just exported is. I'll move that over here. And side note, in order to bind that certificate to your storefront server in order to use um, SSL 443, you go here, go to bindings, or you might see 80, that's it. Just choose add HTTPS and choose your certificate and that will bind it to your storefront server. So important step to do that as well. Uh, but now let's go ahead and jump back over to the Netscaler okay, in which I'm going to log in here. So we'll wait for that to come up. Then we're going to go down to traffic management, SSL, and in SSL, by the way, if this isn't enabled, go ahead and enable this feature. You'll see an option here under tools called import PKCS number 12. We're going to select that. I don't know why I put NSU automatically there, but you want to create an output file name. So again, I'll call that wildcard2. Um, we're going to choose local since it's not on the appliance yet. And there's my picture there. Let's go to my domain controller in which I will see that certificate here. I'll put in that password, put in my format. Uh, I don't have a passphrase. Oh, this is something we create. Um, let's see if we can skip the passphrase. 
Yep, so we don't have to put in a passphrase there. Oh, we do. Okay, um, let's give this a passphrase. Alright, so... Doesn't like that format. That is new, I haven't seen AES256 there. I'll choose DES3 here. In which, okay, so my, my certificate should be there. So the next step is go to SSL certificates, server certificates. You're going to choose install. And again, call that wildcard2 or whatever your naming convention is. This time we're going to choose appliance. And you'll see we have an option for wildcard2 here as a PFX, but we should also have it as like a, uh, just a certificate by itself. So don't, don't choose the P, PFX ex extension, choose the other one that the Netscaler creates, and that should have both the certificate as well as the key in that file. So choose that one for, for both. This is gonna be that, that PEM phrase that they asked for earlier. And hit install, and you should see the new wildcard here located under server to certificates. Once that's done, if you have your load balancer, you can go ahead and jump into your load balancer and you can bind that certificate under server certificate to that load balancer. So pretty straightforward. It's kind of the same process for your gateway, except you might actually have to generate a key through, let's say like a GoDaddy and then um, complete that certificate signing request with your CA and then generate the PFX that way. Um, actually, I think that might be a, a great next video to create. So if anyone does have any questions from today's video, feel free to write in the comment box below. Otherwise, until the next video. Thanks everyone.